something that embodies gratitude, appreciation, and power of selfless service. We are honored to host this event and celebrate the remarkable, the remarkable individuals who constantly give themselves to serve the needs of others. In 2001, New Horizon Church International Congregation established the Community Service Awards as a way to express our collective thanks and admiration. These awards are presented annually, paying tribute to the lives and legacies of influential uh, civil rights movement martyrs. These individuals exemplify the principles of self-determination and community service that we hold dear. The recipients of these awards are nominated and selected based on their demonstrated lifestyles, which embody care, commitment, and a relentless pursuit of improving the quality of life for everyone. Inspired by the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, who emphasized the importance of unwavering dedication, we strive to recognize those who have put their hands to the plow without looking back. Since the inaugural ceremony in 2002, we have presented a total of 165 awards. That's from 2002 to 2003, 23, excuse me spanning a wide range of fields as medicine, education, community development, and advocacy, and youth ministry, government, media, business, health, mil military, arts, and many, many more. Additionally, we have proudly bestowed four Lifetime Achievement Awards upon the individuals whose lifelong contributions have left an incredible impact on our community. New Horizon Church takes great pride in publicly acknowledging the remarkable work being done of, by few who serve so many. It is through their dedication and selflessness that we are inspired to make a difference in the lives of others. At this moment, I would like to take a moment and request that any of our past recipients please stand. Your presence here today is a testament to the extraordinary contributions you have made, and we applaud your unwavering commitment to serving others. Once again, I'm Lorna Cole Sinclair, and I'll be your host, and again, I welcome you to New Horizon Church International Community Service Program. Let us join together in celebrating the spirit of community spirit of community service, and honoring those who have made a profound impact on our world. At this time, we'll have Miss Nakila Hemingway, who will introduce our honorees. Please give her a hand. Good evening. I'll be introducing our first honorees. Introducing our first honorees are Ms. Tony, Mr. Tony, excuse me, and Vanessa Edna. Tony, a native of Canton, Mississippi, and Vanessa, a native of Natchez, Mississippi, have been married for 21 years. They have six children and three grandchildren. The Edmonds believe in operating in faith, trusting in God, and putting in the work needed to succeed. Tony and Vanessa feel that the business they own are community service related, ones that help build and strengthen the community. Currently together, Tony and Vanessa own and operate four businesses in Jackson, Mississippi. School creation and installation, first class beauty salon, Edmund tour and travel, and I'll be doggone food truck. Two of Edmund's four businesses, school creation and installation and first class beauty salon have been in operation for over 20 years. School creation and installation installs school equipment and furniture throughout the state of Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Tennessee. First Class Beauty Salon not only makes women beautiful on the outside, but it also ministers to the whole woman. This helps to heal a woman's heart so she can see and know that just how beautiful she really is on the inside and well as on the outside. Edmund Tour and Travel offers their clients the opportunity to travel 
at an affordable cost. And finally, their final business is I'll Be Doggone Food Truck, which not only serves doggone good hot dogs, hamburgers, and snacks, but also helps to feed their communities homeless and needy. Tony and Vanessa Edmond put their favorite Bible verse, James 2, well, excuse me, chapter 2, verse 26, faith without works is deed, and Matthew chapter 6, 3 through 4, given in secret into action by praying daily, serving others, and giving back to the community throughout their businesses. Introducing Mr. Tony and Vanessa Edmond as our first honoree. Our next honoree, Mr. Joseph Roger. Joseph Roger is the president and founder of We Based Management Solutions, a training and small business developed from develop firm, excuse me, development firm, firm, excuse me. He is a certified American Society for Training and Development Professional Trainer, a certified workforce development performance, performance manager, a certified crisis prevention and intervention trainer. Joseph holds bachelor's degree in criminal justice and business management, as well as a master's degree in business administration. Since starting We Based Management Solutions in 2004, Joseph has maintained its daily operation, including providing instructions and direction for his training staff to help further their personal business knowledge, knowledge growth and development to ensure they provide the best service possible to the small business owner. We Based Management Solutions provide strategic training that focuses on and promotes business enhancement and perform performances, which helps to enhance the visibility, profitability, and sustainability of a small business. Joseph is dedicated to giving back to the community through his work with churches, civic groups, sponsorships of summer youth training programs, and as a volunteer mentor, trainer, and webinar management, manager and presenter with SCORE, formerly known as the Service Corp and Retired Executive. He also hosts and sponsors community networking events and educational workshops to help enlighten and educate local business owners. One, one of Joseph Rogers' greatest joys is to work with local businesses to increase their visibility, profitability, and long-term sustainability throughout continuous learning and development. Introducing Mr. Joseph Rogers. Next, we will have Ms. Mary Overton. <laughs> Mary Overton, affectionately known as Miss O or Miss Overton, has been an educator of pre-K children for over 40 years. <laughs> she taught at Pied Piper Child Care Center for most of those 40 years, turning out children who have now become productive citizens and as artists, physicians, teachers, first responders, activists, and so much more. At the heart of who she is, she is a servant. Ms. Overton was born in Hazelhurst, Mississippi, and raised in Jackson, Mississippi, graduating from Central High School. She loves her church, where she serves and volunteers in many capacities with the children's ministry, the children's choir, the dance ministry, and the food ministry. You can find her in the kitchen cooking her famous grits that have been named as Miss Mary's Grits. Ms. Overton, is currently employed part-time at the Mississippi Black Women's Roundtable in the Community Outreach and Rapid Response Program, where she holds school with the children in the laundry, in the, excuse me, in the laundry mat while their parents watch clothes. She has four children, including her, bon her bonus son, Ariel, eight grandchildren, and the love of her life, Cleveland Dorch, for over 40 years. Mrs. Mary Overton is the GOAT of service and family, and it's always driven in style. <laughs> Introducing Ms. Mary Overton. <laughs> Our next honoree is Ms. Tyra Hickman. Tyra Hickman is a lifelong resident of Mississippi. She accredits her family and church upbringing for her faith and strong sense of family values. Her diagnosis of sickle cell caused Tyra to spend much of her childhood in medical facilities and providers' offices. The medical staff provided Tyra with comfort, consoled and cared during her hospital days, stays, I'm, excuse me, and they became her extended family and thus birthed her future calling and love for nursing and helping others. Tyra has an associate degree of nursing acquired from Hines Community College, a bachelor of nursing from Mississippi University for Women, 
and a master's in nursing from Walden University. She has been a community advocate for people with sickle cell disease. As a nurse, she helped establish and worked in the adult sickle cell unit at UMC, providing adequate health care for those adults suffering from, with this disease. She volunteered with the Mississippi Sickle Cell Foundation, helped organize and participate in walks, health fairs, and other fundraising activities. Tyra is currently a psych psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner who serves as a community educator in the healthcare field with working with con congressional health nurses and New Horizon Health Ministry, conducting screenings, individual counseling, preventing, excuse me, presenting educational programs, vaccine drives, and connecting with other local and national health agencies to improve health outcomes in our communities in rural Delta County. Her hope is to remove the stigma associated with prior, prioritizing one of mental's hopes mental health, excuse me. Tyra feels the ability to serve others is a gift as she continues to be a servant for God and his people. Introducing Ms. Tyra Hickman. <laughs> Our next honoree is Attorney Terry Murray Wallen. Attorney Terry Murray Wallen was born and raised in Indianapolis, Indiana. She received her bachelor's degree from D. Jackson State University and completed her Jewish doctorate at Indiana University School of Law. In 2005, she established the Wallen Firm, proven professional performance in Clinton, Mississippi. The Wallen Firm is a boutique law firm that offers legal services in the areas of businesses, transactions, real privacy, probate matters, criminal defense, and personal injuries. Attorney Wallen's legal services also include community education in the areas of Willis and airship property. Terry is a member of the Magnolia Bar Association, Mississippi Public Defenders Association, and National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. She is on the executive board of Cherry Park Neighborhood Association and NAACP Clinton, Mississippi branch. And she has managed and litigated, excuse me, family law cases for a nonprofit agency serving indigenous families her desire is to see that all of her clients get the justice they deserve. Terry is married to her Jackson State suitor, Maurice A. Wallen Sr. They have three children, all of whom are proud HBCU graduates and have graduated degrees from medical schools. Introduce attorney Terry Murray Wallen in her absence. <laughs> Last, we have Pastor Earl and Gloria Thompson. Pastor Earl Thompson and his wife, First Lady Gloria Thompson, have faithfully served as Wahilia Missionary Baptist Church, located in Utica, Mississippi, for the past 14 years. They have been married for 39 years and are, proud, are the proud parents of four children, eight grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. Pastor Earl Thompson is a graduate of Murrah High School and attended Jackson State University. He accepted his calling into ministry in November 1997, at Greater Rose Chapter Church under the leadership of Dr. Willie Brown Jr. in 1999. Well, excuse me. In 1999, he was ordained by Pastor R.E. Cook at the Greater New, New Jerusalem Church. He is presently retired from Nissan. He served in the U.S. Navy for eight years. First Lady Gloria Thompson graduated from Lanier High School and St. Dominic School of Nursing. She is presently a registered nurse at Mississippi Baptist Medical Center with over 40 years of experience. She has traveled throughout Mississippi promoting health and wellness events as a congressional health nurse. The Thompsons are very much in tune with the local needs of Utica, Mississippi, and are continuously working as community advocates to meet, their, to meet these needs. They have organize, organized local health and wellness events, organized community clothing and food drivers, and with local churches for the Good Samaritan Center coat drives for the local schools, fed and cared for the needy families, and assisted Utica and Rolling Fork families who lost their homes to fire and storm. As they continue to follow God's word, they are continuously seeking ways to show God love to others. Introducing our last honoree, Pastor Earl and Gloria Thompson. Amazing job, Nikila. Everybody, please give one of our amazing youth who's grown up here at the church, a round of applause for such a great job. 
And please give our honorees another round of applause. We're excited to honor you all this evening. Continuing with our program next, we will have a musical selection by Jamayet Washington.
please give her another round of applause for that. Miss Washington, that was beautiful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce our distinguished speaker for today, Minister Ernestine Spires. A native of Yazoo County, Mississippi, she is a woman of many roles and accomplishments with a deep commitment to serving others. Minister Spires is a devoted wife to Hubert Spires and a proud mother of two daughters. She is also finds immense joy in being a grandmother to two grandchildren and, of course, her son-in-law, son Micah. Her family is a constant source of love and inspiration in her life. Now, education has played a significant role in Minister Spire's journey. She is a graduate of Bayside High School. Uh, she also holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology and mental health from Tougaloo College. And continuing her pursuit of knowledge and faith, she went on to study at Trinity Theological Seminary, where she obtained both her master's and her doctorate in theology in 2010. Now, as a dedicated member of right here at New Horizon Church International, Minister Spire serves as an associate minister and holds the esteemed position of pastor of InReach Ministry. Her commitment to spiritual growth extends further as she teaches Sunday school and actively participates in ministries like the greeting ministry, the clothes closet ministry, and additionally, she is a valued member of the Fellowship of International Churches, also known as FOIC, fostering connections beyond right here in our local community. Minister Spires' impact reaches beyond the church wall walls. For seven years, she was an active member of the Southgate Prayer Warriors, ministering to individuals within the federal prison system. She also is dedicated five years of service at the Central Mississippi Correctional Facility in Rankin County, offering spiritual guidance and support. In her personal life, Minister Spires enjoyed a successful career in banking spanning over 37 years 37 and a half, let's not forget that, 37 and a half years. Today, she is a proud owner and travel agent of Inspired Travels, LLC, indulging her passion for exploring God's beautiful creation throughout the world. Minister Spires finds great fulfillment in sharing the word of God and her favorite scripture, it's Psalms 23 and 1, serves as a guiding light for her in her life. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Please join me in warmly welcoming Minister Ernestine Spires, a woman of faith, compassion, and devotion to the community to community service. We are honored to have her and her grace us with this event today and share her wisdom with us all. Please put your hands again together for Minister Spires. We'll actually have another selection before she comes up for Miss Washington.
Good evening. Y'all all looking so good. Amen. Y'all look so good. Thank you. I stand before you humble for the privilege just to chat with you just for a little, mo a little while this afternoon. Just a little while. Long, not long. I didn't come to preach, but I came to talk. I praise the Lord. I'm just um, thankful for the opportunity to share and to just pour into to you all of what, our appreciation for what you do. So before I do that, if you will, if you would just grace me, if you will, if you would come down, because I want to talk to you. I don't want to talk with my head to you, but if you don't mind, I would love to just talk to you. So if you would. Now, thank you for your service. Amen. Okay, okay. Uh, first, I want to just thank you for being so obedient and, and obliging me. Because I will tell you, I'm like, I've never been to one of these services. And I just want the Lord to be pleased in the process. But I want you to fill our hearts this afternoon for what you give. So that's why I asked you if you would be so kind to come down. Because I want you to see if you can receive what I'm from my heart to yours. Amen. Let us bow. Most gracious Father, we just come this afternoon. Just thank you. Thank you, Father, for being who you are. Thank you, Father, for gracing us this evening to just come together and to love on your people, to recognize that the service is needed, Lord God. The service is appreciated, Lord God, and it's making a difference. So I thank you for this hour, Lord God, and I ask you to just bless our time together, that you be glorified. In Jesus' wonderful name, we ask it all. Amen? Amen. Okay. So I stay on task. I've made some, I wrote down, so I'm trying not to go straight from it, if you will. But when I was thinking about community service awards, how do you reward somebody for doing such an awesome job that comes from the heart? And so as I pondered, I just want to talk to you about and let you know that your service matters. Your service matters matters. Yes, it calls for sacrifice, but it matters. And to ensure, sometimes we, we think we all are on the same page to ensure that we understand what service is. And I looked up in the dictionary in the Random House College Dictionary, and it simply stated that service is the act of assistance to help or to aid. And I said that because sometimes people think that service is taking over, that they have to fulfill and do all that, do the heavy lifting, do it all. But I want you to understand service is simply assisting, helping, or aiding somebody. So when you decided to render a volunteer for service, did you really count the cost? Did you really think about how much it would really cost you, the sacrifice that you would have to make? To fulfill the commitment that you've made. And when I looked at that and I thought about what does service, Lord, what does it require? It requires a servant heart that is clothed in humility. A servant heart. Humility helps us to seek to bring out the glory and honor to God. And it also helps us to look out for others' interests beyond our own. And, we, and I was looking in the scripture, and it told us, it was telling me over and over again in Colossians, the third chapter, verses 12 through 14. And Philippians came about and was doing the same thing in Philippians 2, 3 through 8. And then it reminded me that humility, it produces gratitude. Something that we all have the capacity to say thank you when people do something that's not required. When people assist that's not being asked. Thank you. Amen. And then he goes on, he said, now, I was beginning to think about what all of that entails when I'm counting the costs and some of the byproducts of humility. So if you allow me, and I'm, you know how sometimes we sit down and we take inventory, what it is that we need when we go to the grocery store, we have a listing. So I began to say, okay, 
Service requires a prayer life. Because with the cares of the world, we need somewhere to lay all our burdens on our Father's feet, at his feet, to get re-energized, to get ready for the next round. Then it requires a commitment. I'm checking out to make sure I'm able to fulfill that commitment I'm making. I'm checking my boxes. It requires faithfulness. Can I be faithful to this, that this cause that I'm volunteering to perform? It requires patience. Do I have the patience? Because everybody don't run at the same pace. The race. You know, the scripture tells us the race is given, not given to the swift, not to the strong, but to he that endureth until the end. And then I thought about it, it requires kindness. Something that we all have the capacity to have. Kindness. Consistency. It's pretty bad. You this way, I, you know, I saw you Sunday, but Monday you were, who, who are you? To be consistent in what you're giving me. And then I was checking, he's still, I got to be determined to hold out, to not give up, to not give in, but to stay the course. And I was going out, I was checking those, but all of these things, we, I needed before, to, for you to fulfill your commitment to, for the service that you rendered. We need all of that. And what it all bows up to is, is humility, humbling ourselves. And so, and then I went a little bit further. You know, life is something, because I hear Bishop talk about, you know, our feelings are fickle. Half the time I hear him say that a lot. But I also know that we're in the flesh. So I'm going to be real with you this afternoon, okay? And one of the things he brought to my mind is, you know how we are. We got to not allow what people say, how they talk about us, to derail us of the, the commitment to be faithful to the job, to the task that we have agreed to do. We have to be, we got to have some um, backbone, if you will. We got to toughen up for those that are lying in wait for you, schemes and plotting against you, and those who actually attack you. We can't, get, we can't allow ourselves to be derailed off the commitment that we made because that humility is covering in us. It's keeping us where we need to be. That's why prayer is so needful. And as I was continuing to ponder on that, I was reminded that on um, today, as a matter of fact, I was talking to one of the uh, pastors here and reminded, it's a hard issue. Because the scripture tells us from the heart flows the, li the flows life, the issues of life. You know? So if it's in you to serve, it's there. We just gotta make sure everything's intact so when we serve, we're making a difference. Because your service matters. And yes, it does call for sacrifice. So I, I was looking and I went even further and I thought about it and I said, Lord, okay, so they've done all these things, scheming and plotting and all of these things. I got to keep my eye where it needs to be. And he said, whatever you do, whatever you do, work heartily. Work heartily. He said, as to the Lord, as to the Lord, he said, and not to me, and that's the thing we get distracted on, but as unto him. And if we can remember that every time we put our heart into the plow, as unto the Lord, I'm here to tell you your day will get lighter, your skip will get even, even better, your joy will be full, and your peace will be. It will be there because you're not doing it unto me, but it's unto the Lord. Amen. And so as I began to ponder about it, and I said, oh, Lord. And he reminded me, he said, I have given to each of you, and this is what I want you to hear. I have given to each of you gifts, talents, and I've given you treasures that is uniquely yours, that is needed in the kingdom. It's needed to build people up. And I'm saying that because people get built, torn down every day by the world. Saying what God say about them. What does he say? He said, you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. He said, you are the beloved of the Lord. You are highly favored. He said all of these things. We got to get to the point that we, we see what God sees. We say what he say about us. And that's why I'm so thankful for the Our Believers Creed. Thank you. To remind me who God says that I am because we've gotten beat up by the world enough. And then he went on to say, we are there to encourage. Your service helps us to encourage 
others along the way that they are not in it by themselves to encourage them because we all need encouragement sometimes to help them along life journey. And then he said, we're there to, even in your service, to pray for them and with them. And I'm saying pray, P-R-A-Y, and not P-R-E-Y. Sometimes we get those mixed up. But we are there to make a difference because your service count. Your service is needed. Your service makes a difference. Whether you feel it, whether you see it, it does. It makes a difference. So I said all that to say this because John, John, uh, James said here, he said, um, he said, you know what? To know to do. I'm, I'm, I'm short in this. He said to know to do and do it not to hear and see him. So let me quote that so I won't get out of, out of order. The scripture says, therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. And I believe we all know right from wrong. I believe we all can recognize good from evil. Amen? Amen. And then I was looking at one other thing, and then I'm going to get to the meat of what I want to share with you. John Wesley said a famous quote, and this is what he said. Do all the good you can in all the ways you can to all the souls you can in every place you can at all the times you can with all the zeal you can as long as ever you can. End quote. I said, wow. Going back to that servant heart. If you're going to do it, that's a lifestyle, y'all. When I was looking at it, I said, that's a lifestyle. And it has to be in the heart to be able to render, to go back day after day and to perform when people don't, doesn't seem like they appreciate what you're doing. But there is one that sits high and looks low, that sees all that you do, that appreciate what you do in the kingdom because it matters. It makes a difference. And he see the sacrifice that you're making. Amen. And so I was, as I was strolling to the, through the Bible and I said, Lord, I came across, and I want you to, for those that may have your Bibles with me, allow me to read this. In the book of John, chapter 13, I want to start at verse 4. So if you will engage me, I'm not going to be long, I promise. I promise. Well, that's my aim. Okay, John chapter 4, this is the New International Version, and this is what it reads. Now keep in mind... This, we were talking about God. We were talking about Jesus. He said, rose from supper and laid aside his garments. He took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet to wipe them with the towel and with which he had girded. Then he came to Simon Peter. Y'all, I know we have a lot of Simons in this place. Simon Peter. And Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? And Jesus answered and said to him, what I'm doing, you do not understand now, but you will know after this. And then I would like to skip up to verse 12. And this is what he said. You know, God always tells us why. He said, so when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, now this is Jesus talking. Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you would do as I have done to you. Did y'all hear that? Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. Now, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. And when I looked at that scripture and I kept looking and I was talking and I was, and, and I just want to just share this with you. It doesn't matter your title. It doesn't matter your socioeconomic status. It doesn't matter how many degrees you have. We are in this together. We are working, to, we are working together. If you can envision in your mind the disciples around the table, and this is not long before the Lord is, is about to be crucified, if you will, taken. He's sitting around a table in the Jewish community in the day that when someone was invited to their homes, it was tradition and custom that the owner of the home will have a servant in his house to wash the feet of his guests. 
Now, I want you to imagine. May I, we, we got, y'all hear me, right? I got loud enough now. I'm sorry. I want you to imagine this. A table setting with 12, with their disciples all around the table. And the Lord is sitting at the table. Nobody moving. I want you to imagine this. And our Lord and our Savior gets up from the table and begin to disrobe and take off and lay his clothing aside and gird himself with a towel. And he began to pour some water in the basin. And he, then he began to wash the feet of his disciples. Now, he just told us now, they call him rabbi, which is teacher. And they call him Lord, rightly so. They were his disciples. He was a teacher. But now we see the disciples are, if you will, he just, he flipped that thing. Remember, the servant normally is the one that washed the feet. He flipped that thing because he was their master. He was their Lord. And he washed their feet. He lowered himself. He humbled himself. This is the greatest example we can have of humility and service for us. So when we are weary, when we are tired, and we want to throw in the towel, if we can remember that Jesus himself lowered himself, became a servant. For he came to serve and not to be served. He was the greatest example. He said, this was an example for us. So as you're going out, you're touching lives, you're making a difference because your service matters. As you're going out and you're not getting thank you for all that you do, your service matters, sister. As you're going out and people begin to say all oh, men are ill against you, your service matters because you're looking to the hill from which cometh your help, not to man, but to God. Amen. I want to leave this with you and I'm going to my seat. To the honorees this afternoon. We honor you for all that you do for the people, for our communities, because your service matters. The Bible teaches to give honor to where honor is due, so we honor you today. Do we not? We honor you for what you do in the kingdom. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your love of people, Thank you for the love of God in, in volunteering in the kingdom because your service matters. Your service impacts the lives of people and communities. Yes, your service matters, and yes, it comes with a sacrifice. So keep doing what you're doing because our greatest example of service rendered was given and modeled by Jesus Christ. And if you would, I just want... To take a look at the monitor. Our greatest example, servant that gave his life in service for us because of his love for us. And all through the Bible, it talks about love. In fact, Jesus said, A new commandment I give to you, that ye love ye one another as I've loved you. And so you love one another. How do we do that? In the service that we give. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. In closing, I pray you will continue to work in the kingdom because it's needed, that you will, you're affecting lives and communities because it's needed, and the sacrifice you're, you've made has not gone unnoticed. May God bless you, keep you forevermore. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Ernestine Spires. Thank you for your words of wisdom. Thank you for your commitment to your faith and to our community. We appreciate you, and I think we all understand that your service matters, our service matters, and that we all need to take inventory for what we're doing for our own communities. At this time, we will have the presentation of the award. If our chair lady, Geneva James and Bishop Cruda. We were going to uh, let them come to the podium. You want them to go?
and we'll have you guys come here. Bishop, we'll have you here. If you guys can come and say something, and then we'll have you go back to the front. Yes. All right, please give Bishop a round of applause. Hey, Bishop. All right, we will start with our first honoree in business, Tony and Vanessa Edmond. Good evening, everyone. First, give an honor to God, who is the head of all of our lives in here. Give an honor to our bishop and first lady, Mother Geneva, and the Community Service Award members, and to all of you for being here. We just want to say thank you. The work that we do, um, we do it as a team. This is my teammate. This my this the love of my life. Okay, so we sit down and we do things together as a team we pray about it we ask God to give us vision and when God give us vision he give us her vision and a lot of things that we do we um we're like oh my God how are we gonna make this happen but God makes it happen you know that right so I sat and I was writing down what we were to say and as we came through the door they said, you all are going to have to march in. I got this big red bag. So they ended up taking my big red bag away. But you know what? I know God, and God going to give me what I'm supposed to say, okay? I have to honor him. In all thy ways, we acknowledge him. And he does direct our path, okay? My husband often says, well, baby, if you say it's going to happen, I know you're going to get in that prayer closet and you're going to make it happen and we're going to make it happen together, okay? Um, this award, we are very humbled by it. Um, it was so, it was like unexpected because we don't expect to get rewards for the work that we do because it's natural. We're doing what we want to do and what we think that God wants and intends for us to do, okay? So I hope my husband has something to say because normally I'm the mouth and he just be like, well... Why, why, why I think you're on sale tonight? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you all so much. And we are very, very humbled, and we are very thankful and grateful for this award. Blessings to all. Blessings. Right. Also in the category of business, Joseph Roger. Please give him a hand. kind of choked up. I am so humbled uh, for this recognition and, and, and just to show you where I'm coming from for the first 56 years of my life I wanted to be an attorney. That's all I ever talked about. My children told me daddy you're going to be the oldest student in law school. And then one night at Belhaven University I was doing a presentation, and it just came to me. Joe, you got the platform that God wants you to have. You can reach people through the platform that you have. And he put three words on my heart. Jesus, others, and you. And that's what I tried to do with my life put somebody before myself, do what I can to make a difference. And as long as he shows me the way, then that's what I'll be doing. Thank you. In the community advocate category, we have Mary Overton. 
also known as Miss O, Lady O, Miss Fabulous. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this, I take this as an honor and a privilege to receive this award because I don't think about getting awards when I do my work. My work comes from my heart. I've always asked God to use me in a way that would benefit somebody else. So when I stand out in the community or when I stand out doing stuff, it's not about me. It's the people that I can raise up to be a better person and help their families do what they need to do. And I just thank God and thank the community and thank Miss Gail. <laughs> and I just thank you. Thank you. In the category of health, we have Tyra Hickson. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, definitely not a wars person, I like to say, behind the scenes, but just truly grateful for Bishop, my family, and the Horizon Church. Thank you. In ministry, we have Pastor Earl and Gloria Thompson. Bishop Cook and the members and friends here at New Horizons Church to the um, nominating committee, we say thank you. We are most humbled by this award. We were not expecting this award. We thank our church family, Rogelia, and we thank our family and friends for being here today. And just thank you all for this award. We truly, truly were not expecting it. I am a nurse by profession, but I feel like God gave me this calling to serve. I've been helping to take care of people all my life, and I can't think of anything else I'd rather do. I have been a nurse for 40 years, and I thank God for the calling. And as I continue to serve others, I just thank him for giving me the servant's heart that he has given me. Now, my husband is going to say a few words. <laughs> I'm a Baptist pastor, so I'm not going to be long this time. <laughs> because she said much of what, what I have been talking about to her that I was going to say. But but to the bishop and to my friend and brother and, and to this church and to all of you and, and to the community. And, but um, I want to say especially to my wife, Amen, amen, because she has been supporting, you know, what God has placed in us, amen, to do things, amen, to glorify him. But last but not least, I want to thank Rohelia, amen, the church that I serve, because they have supported me, 
in all the things, all the things that the Lord have um, just required us to do. And I can relate to the speaker, amen, because she truly, truly, amen, gave a word. And that word came from my heart, too. It just seemed like the spirit just told her what to say to all of us. And that really, really blessed me. Because we was not expecting this at all. Amen. But, um, but she said something about a servant heart. A servant heart. When you have a servant heart, you don't, you just do things. Come on, talk to me, somebody. And plus, you don't look for no accolades. Because why? All glory and honor belong to God. That's why I said, bless the Lord, all my soul. And all that within me, bless his holy name. Because he's worthy to be praised. And I thank God, first of all. Ain't that right? Amen. So God bless you. Thank you all. And and like I said, I'm not going to be long this time. I ain't going to preach. I'm holding myself. Let's give all of our honorees another round of applause, would you? The Bible says, give honor to those that honor is due. And we have found each of you to be honorable and a servant, as has already been said, of this community. And so thank you for giving us the wonderful privilege to honor you because you deserve it. Amen. It's, um, it's been 22 years. This is the 22nd year of uh, doing these community service awards. And if I could just briefly go back to the very beginning and the idea for all of this was that we've always, New Horizon has always been a place of service. We've always taken serious the commitment uh, from Jesus to serve the community, to do, if you will, maybe some things out of the box but to make a tremendous difference. And so since that was a value to us, then we just felt like another extension of that should be to honor people who were doing good things, if you will, like we were, sometimes the same things and some things a whole lot better than we were doing them, uh, are things that we hadn't even thought about. And so that was the, the impetus of all of this. And, uh, and it's been a wonderful thing to do now for over 22 years. And, uh, and, and we thank God for this latest class of people that we're honoring. And so once again, we thank God for each one of you. And we pray that as you look at this award, it will remind you that there are some people who appreciate who you are and what you do, all right? Because if you're a servant, then a lot of times it's, uh, it, it is without thank, thanks. It's, you know, it's selfless. It, uh, it can be tough. But once again, we appreciate what you do because each of you is also a uh, change agent. And I know the Lord loves change agents. Let me also take the opportunity to thank the committee. Because nothing just happens. This, this, this event doesn't just come about. It's some people behind the scene who work hard, okay? Who think about this, who pray about this, and then who go and do the work of making this happen. And so I also want to publicly thank those folks, starting first with uh, the chair of the committee, Mother Geneva James. Thank you, Geneva. And in a moment, she'll come up and have some words anyway. 
but thank you for your great work and your efforts in this. And this has been something that's really been near and dear to, uh, to Mother Geneva's heart, and, and we thank you. This is also her swan song event. She's told us she, she's going to let somebody else go do this in the future, okay? And so, uh, but Giga, Geneva, you, you've done an absolutely fabulous job. Um, and we want you to know that we appreciate you wonderfully. Thank you. Amen. Uh, we also want to thank the committee. If other committee members would stand up, please. Ladies and gentlemen, stand up. Where did, uh, oh, right. Okay. We, 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 we thank each one of these ladies and Jim, okay, in the back uh, for what they do because They've also been faithful over the years with this. And, um, and I tell you, they, they pick really good candidates, okay? Uh, and, um, you know, a lot of times people will thank me. And, I, I, you know, and inside of myself, Pastor, I'm just saying, you know, I really didn't have anything to do with this. Now, they did run it by me and say, what do you think? I mean, when people do a great job, all you do, Pastor, say what? Amen. Amen. And so give the committee another round of applause, would you? Thank you so much for each of you and, and, uh, and what you do. Uh, we will continue uh, with this in the future. And so for others, particularly who are part of New Horizon, certainly we, uh, uh, some of you may like to be uh, on this committee. And if that is the case, see me or see one of these committee members, and we would love to have you to be a part of it as well. Let me also take the opportunity, if we've got any past honorees here, would you stand? I may be stealing some of Geneva's thunder here. I think we've got some other past honorees here. So good to have each of you here as well. And so for the folks that's been honored this year, you are now, okay, an honoree. And so we would hope that when we do this annually, y'all would also come back, okay, and be a part of, uh, a part of this audience of of this great effort that goes forward. Let me also take the opportunity to thank all of our guests who are with us here. I uh, want to recognize my good friend and, and his first lady, uh, David Coleman, Pastor David Coleman. Thank you all for being with us tonight as well. And, uh, and others, we got any other pastors and ministers in here besides some of our own folks from the house? I bless you. All right, what, what's your name? How you doing, Mr. Stokes? Th thank you so much for being with us. We are honored by your presence as well. All right? All right. And if we have other guests who are not parts of New Horizon, not one of our past honorees, would you just wave your hand? Okay, all right. Thank you so much for being with us as well. We, we are honored by your presence here uh, also. Once again, another great, uh, wonderful program and so I want to thank our media ministry and everybody back there. This is being streamed, right? It is being streamed, so folk all over the world see it, okay? So Mary, you allowed to be anywhere and somebody come up to you. I know you. That, 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 that would bother you, I know. But, but they see you, okay? And so uh, uh, that's a good thing. Would you uh, uh, join me in giving a great welcome to uh, our chair? of the Community Service Awards, Mother Geneva Jane. Well, yeah, and you can say it again, too, okay? Uh, I, I, I didn't uh, make a, give appreciation to Lauren. Lauren, thank you, you know, I love you so, so much, and, and we always appreciate you, darling, and what you do, all right? And you're always pretty, too, okay? All right. Well, I'm a little short here. Bishop has taken, he told me I could say it over again with all that he said, but I'm Mother Geneva J Durham James. I'm the chairperson of the New, Her New Horizon Church International Community Service Award Committee. On behalf of the committee, we congratulate you, honorees, again. Job well done. We really appreciate you. To the 
audience, the attendees. We would like to thank each one of you for attending and celebrating the accomplishments of these so deserving honorees. I would like to thank our speaker, Minister Ernestine Spires. Our saxophonist, Jamietta Washington. Wait a minute, and I'm real proud that she's my great niece. <laughs> How about that? Uh, Pastor Reyes, thank you. Nikila Hemingway, thank you very much, Nikila. Mother Ruthie Jones, who was our greeter, uh, thank you, Mother Jones. The media ministry, uh, headed by Kahende Gaynor. Thank you. And I would like to personally thank this wonderful committee that works with me. Uh, Abrilla, Abrilla Pickens, she's not able to come tonight, but she's on the committee. Joanne White, would you please stand, Joanne? <laughs> Keith Riley, in the back there. Our MC for this evening, Lauren Sinclair. Mary Harris, who was not able to be with us tonight. Uh, Patricia Hickman. And one of our honorees, we decided to honor one of our own this year, Mrs. Vanessa Edmund, co-chair. Thanks again, everyone, and blessings. Uh, Bishop, I think you're going to come back up, Laura. Bishop, could you uh, do the benediction? We will have a short reception, uh, a small reception after everything. You may be seated, uh, committee members, Bishop. Once again, we are very, very appreciative of everybody being here. Okay, all right. But they won't tell me where it is, okay? So when we leave here, the more the mother or a younger one is directly across the hall that way, okay? And so we want all of y'all to come over and uh, and receive um, once again the refreshments uh, because we even more appreciate your presence here. It's been a great program. So uh, Jamie, if she's still somewhere around, great, excellent, fabulous job. Okay, back there. Amen. Uh, I'm gonna tell Terrence she did a great job. Uh, and so uh, that's my son, my youngest son. They, they bump around together, okay? I'm praying, yeah, okay. All right. Um, I am. Uh, uh, once again, to everybody else, Ernestine, excellent job. Excellent job. And uh, Sister Hemingway. Okay. And everybody, stand at y'all feet in this place. We'll pray. And please come to the reception, okay? Oh, God, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. The people praise you. All the people praise you. The people ought to praise you. It is a privilege for us people to praise you. Because when our praises go up, your blessings come down. Thank you for another great blessing. Thank you for these honorees. May you do exceedingly, abundantly above what we could ask or think for them. May this memory be a source of encouragement that they would just go forward and do even greater things. Bless the food and drink that's been prepared. Thank you for a great time. And give us traveling mercies and grace as we leave this place. And may all of your people here and those who watch online find themselves in God's house tomorrow in some congregation, giving you, God, the glory. 
In Jesus' name. Everybody said together, amen. You're dismissed.